most of my life I've had knocks and I've been incredibly resilient and I've been able to deal with it myself. I think the knock over EMI was much, much more severe. And the reason it was more severe was unlike the previous knocks where I had my enemies and I had my friends and I sort of, everyone stayed on the same side and I wasn't expecting anything. What happened then was all of a sudden my friends became my enemies and I felt very, very isolated and very, very alone. And I think that's what I was really trying to say about Tiger Woods. And it's much more difficult to come back when you've got no one supporting you. And it, it was just, it was horrendous. Um, and then I ended up in Guernsey, didn't have my family around me, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And I think my decision-making probably got worse as well because the actual uh, emotionality of how I felt affected me. So to get one's confidence back and to sort of get back on the horse or whatever, you know, in my case, to do another deal, one has to really sort of go back to the beginning. And, you know, I was incredibly impressed with Tiger Woods because he came back and he has done, he's done some absolutely amazing golf. And, you know, that is an extraordinary thing to have done given what he went through. And um, I had to somehow find the strength of character and the strength of will to do it. In reality, um, I should have frankly got some help um, medically back in you know, 2009, at least. Um, it would have been a much easier and less painful experience. Um, but it's quite difficult as a businessman to, to accept that you actually need help. You're so used to being in charge of things and uh, telling everybody else what to do. You know, to go along to a doctor and say, you know, I'm not sleeping well, you know, I feel lonely, I'm depressed, etc. It's sort of not what you do. You know, you're the ruler of the universe. You don't want to basically admit that actually you can't even bloody well get to sleep at night. <laughs>